Chapter 28 The Spirit of the Age Sent Packing And the so-called spirit of modernity is false. It has no rights that we need recognize against truth. Its falsity will finish by disgusting those who are cowed by it, and it will have no part to play when Catholics come to rebuilding Catholic society. Its only strength lies in Catholics' weak belief in that truth which strikes it down. The revolutionary Sphinx, assuming the name of the spirit of modernity, proposes a number of riddles, over which liberal Catholics spend more time puzzling than is fitting for the dignity of the children of Christ. Moreover, not one of them responds in a manner that satisfies the Sphinx or himself, or anyone else. And it is to be noted that the monster devours first of all those whom it flatters that they have answered best. How little self-respect and how little faith remain in those men! They come, not without arrogance, in the name of the Sphinx, and in their own name, to inquire how intolerant Catholicism reckons to adapt to the conquests of the spirit of revolt, to its rights of man, religious liberty, the political constitutions based thereon, etc., etc. Nothing could be less of a mystery. First, the spirit of revolt, whatever its degree or nature, assumes an undue posture of superiority that we refuse to recognize. Air is neither the sovereign nor even the equal of truth. It has no right to impose anything on truth, nor to do anything against it. Consequently, the disciples of air, infidels, unbelievers, atheists, and renegades, are neither the masters nor the legitimate equals of the disciples of Jesus Christ, the one God. Between the rabble that gathers around air and the perfect society formed by the Church of Christ, the obligations from the standpoint of inalterable right are absolutely not the same. We know perfectly well to whom it was said, Go and teach! I note in passing that this commandment is identical to the great Crescite, Go forth and multiply! pronounce in the beginning of all things. And these two commands are alive and active, in spite of the ruses and triumphs of death. Error has nothing to teach divine right, nor does it possess the divine right to increase and multiply. Truth may tolerate error, but error must grant truth its liberty. Secondly, since the partisans of error have gained the upper hand and enthroned in the world their so-called principles of the negation of truth and consequently the destruction of all order, we leave them to their false principles until they are quite disgusted with them or die by them, and we hold to our truths by which we live. Thirdly, when the time comes for truth to prevail and for the social edifice to be rebuilt according to the eternal rules, whether it be tomorrow or centuries from now, Catholics will organize all things as they would for themselves, without worrying about those who would prefer to dwell with death. They will set up laws of life. They will put Jesus Christ in his rightful place on top, and he will be insulted no longer. They will raise children to know God and honor their fathers. They will maintain the indissolubility of marriage. And if the dissidents are displeased with that, their children, on the contrary, will appreciate it. They will impose religious observance of Sunday on behalf of society as a whole and for its good, reserving the right to let Jews and free thinkers celebrate Monday or Saturday on their own behalf. Those that this law may bother will be bothered, 
Respect will no longer be refused to the Creator, nor rest to the creature, for the sole purpose of contenting a few fanatics, whose frenzy causes an entire people to sin foolishly and with insolence. Moreover, their houses will be more solid for it, like our own, and their fields more fertile. In a word, Catholic society will be Catholic, and the dissidence that it will tolerate will experience its charity, but will not break up its unity. So much for what one can respond to the Sphinx in the name of Catholics, and there are words that will kill it. The Sphinx is not invulnerable. We possess the weapons needed against it. The Archangel did not vanquish the rebel with material weapons, but with three words, quis ut Deus, who is as God. And Satan fell, struck down by a flash of light. <laughs>